These islands are not just a pretty place for tourists. Figures show it's a pretty good place to be female too. It wasn't always so. Until independence in 1975, women here were very much second-class citizens. They weren't allowed to work and they couldn't travel without their husbands. Over the decades, there's been a drive by government and activists to give women a better deal. And it's paying off. Now, 95% of all girls here go to school. And female life expectancy has jumped from 55 to 79 years. Women were strong even though they were not in the government because we had um, a mass organization of women that was really strong. It was a feminist movement. For instance, Cape Verde is, together with South Africa, is the only country that has the abortion law since 1987. And right now, our parliament has 23% of women parliamentarians. Compared with other countries on mainland Africa, it's looking pretty good. There's a flip side though. The island's menfolk are being left behind. Drug and alcohol addiction are rife. Child labor and gangsterism too. And there are no programs designed to promote male education or health. The average life expectancy for the island's men is 67. Many don't make it past their teens. If you go to, if you interview a doctor in the uh, emergency, they will tell you how dramatic it is. You'd see young boys arriving dead. Um, well, this is a result also of this um, growth, the economic growth that we have, but with a lot of inequality. So rights activists are now shifting focus on gender equality to promote young males. They say all the benefits of female empowerment will be lost if Cape Verde's men are now effectively second-class citizens. Sony Matthew, CCTV, Cape Verde.